Thanks for tuning in. Today we're going to be reviewing the Shanren Max 30 GPS Cycling Computer. GPS Cycling Computers allow you to review real-time riding metrics without the need for additional sensors, but are often expensive. The Shanren Max 30 offers the convenience and accuracy of a GPS Cycling Computer at a much more affordable price point that's not usually available from other brands. In terms of packaging, you can see very simple. You have this nice black and white color scheme with this big glossy representation of the computer. And you can see it's a very large computer as well as a side angle view of it. On the back side, you have basic specs and then other branding printed on the other corners. We'll go ahead and open up the packaging and go over the specs. So retail price on this is $89.99, so pretty affordable for what it is. You get a large three inch screen and it even has a built-in GPS chip. So again, you don't need any additional sensors. It has a 58 hour runtime, which is also pretty impressive. And it has a USB type C charging port to easily recharge the computer. It has a Garmin mount as well. So you can use this on nearly any out front mount or handlebar mount on the market. And it includes a number of Shanren's features like their power estimation algorithm, which uses your cadence and other metrics to compute the real time power without the need for a power meter. You can also control a Shanren RAS Pro taillight and view the current mode with this little LED indicator, which is a cool feature. In terms of what comes with it, obviously you get the computer itself with this little screen protector. You have a little plastic tray that holds the computer in place. The instruction manual, which goes over the operation. Inside this little plastic bag, you also get a couple other features. You get the handlebar mount, so a couple O-rings as well as a little backing. So you can put this on your stem or handlebar. You can see the little hooks on each side. And then a USB type C charging cable. Now let's take a look at the weight of the computer. So the computer by itself comes in at 88 grams. And then the handlebar mount with the two larger O-rings and the rubber backing installed on it. It's a very light eight grams. The Shanren Max 30 combines a number of Shanren's features into a large GPS cycling computer. With its three inch screen, you can see it's a very big computer, fairly slim too, with this protruding bottom, which hides the battery and a nice matte black finish. Brain on this is limited to just Max 30 on the top. And then Shanren on the left side, which is a little bit unusual. The front is actually blank and the right side is blank. Normally Shanren would be printed on the front where most people would actually see it. You can see this is an, a USB type C charging port. So underneath this little gasket, you have a nice USB-C port. It means you can quickly recharge this and a pretty premium construction overall. You can connect the Max 30 with heart rate, cadence, speed, and power meters using Ant Plus and Bluetooth technology. The only thing it does not support is rear radar, DI2, and other e-bike specific features. As far as mounting on this, very simple. Use a Garmin puck. You can see it's actually molded into the base. This uses the two protruding tabs on each side and they actually lock into the corresponding mount. So you rotate it and then you can see nice and secure. It's a very common design, so you can find this nearly anywhere. It's not a Garmin specific feature. So almost all out front mounts or third party mounts use the same design. So really nice to see here and makes it very compatible. Shanren includes a basic handlebar mount. You can see it's just a O-ring design with this little rubber backing. Two different length O-rings, so shorter and longer. You just put this over the hook and then wrap it around. And then you do it with the other one and you get a nice secure fit. You can put this on your stem or handlebar mount. We'd highly recommend upgrading to an out front mount though, like the Shanren Click 2. So you can see this is a one-sided hook. So it basically clamps onto your handlebar, puts it right in front of your stem. And you can see with this one is actually a little bit downward. So optimal viewing angle as well. So it'll sit flush with your stem. So very clean design. You can also buy other out front mounts which have dual sided mounting. So you could put a, the computer on top and then the light on the bottom. The Shannon one is flippable. So you just remove the bolts and then swap it. Then you can have this raised up with this little glossy finish. As far as the screen on this, you can see it uses a basic predefined design. So multi-grid design and all the text and icons have a predefined location. So it's very restrictive. That means you can't put overlays. You can't have configuration menus or anything like that like you'd have with your cell phone. And that's one of the reasons this is a under $100 computer. However, it is a very big screen, so you actually have tons of space here. 
you can see we have six items on the bottom in a grid and then another three items on the top portion with the speed most prominent. And then the top row you have the icons. So pretty slick. And you can see very strong backlight as well. The other sign this is a little bit cheaper is the fact that you can see the LED lighting elements. So you can see there's three of them and they're slightly exposed. Something we noticed with the other Shanron model. It's a little bit distracting, but from certain angles, you don't really notice it. The user interface on this is also a physical button design. So three buttons on the bottom. Long hold on the far left turns it off. And then a short press actually turns it on, which is a little bit dangerous. So you can accidentally turn it on. Normally it's a hold to turn it on. You have lap functionality. You have the start and stop recording and it auto pauses too. So if you're not moving, it will pause. Then you have the three page layout. So you can press the far right button and it'll toggle between the three available screens. And you have some basic customization here using the app as well. So you can adjust what's shown. You also have some additional features like holding the bottom two will turn off the backlight. Press it again, we'll turn it on, but it is automatically turned on based on the current time. And you can also connect the RAS Pro taillight. And that's what this little LED indicator here is. If you have the taillight on, you can do a long hold and then turn it on or off. The LED will match the color of the RAS Pro and the flashing pattern, which is kind of cool, but almost feels a little bit gimmicky as it's not that useful when you're actually riding. Here you're seeing some riding footage with the Max 30 with the three inch display, it's nice and large. So the font size are very easy to read and you have nine data fields all on a single page. So it's really nice to see all your metrics. Shannon has also really done a nice job with the text and icons. So it's very easy to understand what is where, even though you have so many data fields. You can toggle between the three pages, but again, three pages really aren't necessary as you don't really have that much information to show. The one downside of this computer is some of the start and stop functionality. You have to remember to press play to start a recording. You'll see your data metrics accumulate, but you won't get a trip distance. So it's very easy to forget. A lot of other computers automatically do an auto start and that would have been nice to see here. Once you start it, it does have auto pause so you can just come to a stop and once it sees the speed at zero, it will automatically pause the recording. And then to save it, you do have to remember to hold the middle button down. And again, that's something that's very easy to forget and just turn it off. But otherwise very simple display, easy to read, the backlight is nice and strong. And again, all the icons and battery status are very easy to see. Would have liked to see the RAS Pro taillight integration has a little more functionality, like the battery status. We don't have one connected, but you would see the LED matching the actual taillight LED. But again, that's not that useful. It would have been more convenient to have a battery status or use that LED for something else. But otherwise, very affordable computer. It's nice and large. And you get some basic customization, which you don't see at this price point. Now let's take a look at the Shanron app. As you can see, it's a pretty simple design. You have four tabs on the bottom. Once you've paired the device using Bluetooth and the simple search criteria, then you can actually see the basic interface under home. You can see the add device. You see a little icon for what's being downloaded from the device itself. So any recordings, you can see your devices and then recent activity. What's interesting is also have a restore from firmware option here. So that must happen often enough that it's a default feature. Under recording, you can actually see your previous recordings. So you have a nice map view. Under stats, you can see basic stats. You have analysis. Now this isn't as nice as Strava or other applications where you can do multiple overlays on the chart. You can see you can't really interact with it. We do have nice graphics. And then you have a breakdown of your heart rate zones, cadence zones, and everything else you would need. But again, just not quite as nice as other options like third-party software. So you still probably want to just upload it directly somewhere else. Under device, this is where you can actually do the customization. That's probably the nicest feature of this. So under here, you can do auto switching between the pages so you can automatically loop through them. Under customize, this is where you can really customize what you're showing on each page. And what's interesting is each field actually has multiple options. So if you click on it, you can see you have tons of options. So you can do power, cadence, averages, max heart rate. Some of them are more, more limited like the top right speed one. You can really only show speed, average speed or max speed. And you can see the little icon will update to tell you what you're actually looking at. So it's actually pretty impressive that they've done so much. And thanks to the large size of the screen, you actually have a lot more options than traditional budget computers. Now on like higher end computers, you can't do radial views or swap fields. You're pretty limited to just what's there. But again, it's nice to see. 
You can also do the second and third page. And honestly, you don't need three pages since there's nine fields per page. But if you did want to see average and max, you would have to cycle through three pages as there's no way to show those as each one is, can only be displayed once on each page. The other nice thing is if you don't have a cadence sensor, you can see the heart rate. Under heart rate, you can show cadence or power. And under cadence, you can show power or heart rate. So there's a good chance you'll have at least two of them and you won't end up with a dead field. But if you just have cadence, you will end up sort of with a dead field on here. So you could use that other data display to be max cadence or something else so it's not just blank. You can also turn off the other pages, which is nice. So you don't need all of them. Besides that, there's very basic options. You can do the sensor pairing. You can also do that directly on the device by holding the bottom two buttons and I'll just search for everything. Auto track download, so every time you sync it, you can see I'll download it. You can see your memory usage, total time, distance. Strava authorization, this is to link it to Strava. It doesn't support other software like Training Peak, so you do have to go through Strava or just download it and then export it to your software of choice. You have basic settings like the weight, unit display, wheel size, and you have to do this all on here. You can't change the units on the device itself. And some of these are important, like the weight is used for their power estimation. You can turn off this beep, which is nice. So you can see now it's quiet. Backlight mode and other basic features. You can see the power estimation. You can also adjust your FTP, which is pretty cool. And otherwise, that's about it. You can do a firmware as well. They do have a social aspect here, so you actually have a profile so you can do some basic features here and also do your units and Strava directly from your account. So basic setup, not quite as nice as Strava or other applications, but everything is translated properly and it is pretty easy to use. Now let's compare the Mac 30 with other computers on the market. We've done quite a few reviews, including CatEye, IGP Sport, and Brighton. So with the sub $100 computers, you can see we have the CatEye Air GPS, you can see significantly smaller. They both have the grid display, but the Max 30 is just huge. So you can see much easier to read, bigger font sizes, and you can pretty much see all your metrics in one place. This also has quite a bit more functionality than the CatEye, which is about $60 versus the $90 of the Shanran. IGP Sport also has quite a few options to choose from. They have their BSC series. We have the 200 and the 300 here. You can see the 200 has the breadcrumb view and then it has a simple grid display, but you can see this is a higher pixel screen. So you can actually display overlays. You can display graphs. And with this one, you're very limited to just the predefined zone. So you don't get the flexibility, but you can see the bigger size is nice to have. And if you don't care about map view or navigation, then the max 30 is a pretty good bargain. The BSC 300 adds the color to the screen and then you get full map view. So you can see you get full overlays and then graph views and a full map view, which is really nice to have. But again, it is smaller. So the three inch screen is nice to have on the Shanran. Brighton has quite a few options. We have their S500 here. You can see color touchscreen. So that's one nice thing. You can actually move around and it's easier to swipe through screens do the pairings and you do all the configuration on here as it's a high fidelity screen versus the predefined grid. It does cost more, but if you do want navigation and other features, I highly recommend moving up to a Brighton. We also have their newer 750 SE. So you can see pretty sleek display. Again, a little bit smaller with the design, but you can see it's more rounded and you can see that you have a color touch screen, which is nice to have. So this one again, much cheaper. It's about half the price of the Brighton. But again, if you want navigation, then moving to a Brighton or higher end computer is definitely what you want to do. Otherwise, I think the Shanran is a nice budget computer. It gives you all the features like altitude, gradient, and center connectivity, but you still have a very cheap price and the big screen is really nice to have. So you can see everything in one place. Now let's go over the pros and cons of the Shanran Max 30. What we like about it is they have a large three inch screen. So it's huge, you have nice large font size, so it's very easy to read. And with that multi-field display design, you can see everything on a single page. We're also impressed with the fact that you can do some customization using the Shanran app. This is usually not a feature on this type of display, which is very rigid, but with this one, you can actually switch each field with at least one or two options. The main negatives of the computer is the fact that you have a confusing start and stop interface. It doesn't automatically start recording. You always have to remember to start 
the recording and then stopping and saving it is a little bit awkward. You have to hold that middle button and it's really easy to forget to do that. Also, the RAS Pro taillight integration really isn't that useful. You only see the flash pattern instead of the battery status. So it would have been nice to have a little bit more information there. Taking everything into account would give the computer an 8.8 out of 10. It's a big screen GPS with a very affordable price point. Thanks for watching this review. Don't forget to like and subscribe. You can see more content from us on our website at thesweetcyclist.com as well as follow us on Instagram at thesweetcyclist. This is The Sweet Cyclist reminding you to enjoy the ride.